Inside the studios, we get the Minister of Health and Sanitation, Dr. Austin Denby. We go can talk about the work inside 2021 and the plans they more than get for improved health sector inside this year 2022. Good morning once more, Mr. Minister, and welcome to the Democracy. Thank you. Thank you very much. Pleased to be here. Okay. Um, first, a little um, just get a knowledge or update the public about what may happen inside 2021 at the health sector. So 2021 has been a very, very difficult year uh, as well, though not only for Salon, but for the whole world. Every mind we say you know, some of their health issues are so then they underpin everything that we, we, we do. So when you get this COVID-19 pandemic, nearly every country it bring it down to its knees. So we're very pleased in Salonia, so we try hard. I mean, you just should say Sierra a very resilient country. Uh, even with COVID-19, we're able to overcome the first wave very effectively by all the mitigation action that we'll take. Ibiza, we're able to overcome the second wave. Ibiza will overcome the third wave as well. And now we struggle with the fourth wave, but I know so we're able to for, for still persevere and, and overcome that. At the same time, you know, to COVID-19, I mean, the age, major issue we've been to deal with. You remember... And I get appointed on February 10th. February 14th, Liberia uh, declared a for, um, an Ebola outbreak. Well, from our experience now, so we're able to mobilize all the forces now the front lines. For the first time in the world, we're able to get vaccine them for Ebola vaccine. And we'll first, actually, we developed NAS and NAS alone. We're able to deploy them to all of the frontline healthcare workers there. At the same time, we get active surveillance on the border. Anybody we look like Ebola, we pull them aside, we, we isolate them, we work them up. We get about close to 100 and some alerts. But in the whole process, we stop the virus from coming into Sierra Leone. So again, I think we need to give a lot of credit to ourselves for that. At the same time, we've been getting about 23 cases of, of, uh, of um, polio, uh, so and we're able to contain that. We're able to vaccinate about 1.5 um, picking them in the country. And since April, we we'll don't get any other case of polio. So again, a lot of things when they go on in the background where we all get to be proud of from a prevention standpoint. Okay. But, but I, I think, say, at the same time, what we see with the trial for do now and for say, how will they go into 2022? I think I mean some major planning when they go on during that period day. And now we're ready for really unleash all our plan on Sierra Leone for improve the health workers. So apart from the COVID and polio, the health sector for say get different division or department to for make it be better. We get the health infrastructure, health care service, accessibility of the service here. Also that thing they wanna be doing, we believe say we didn't hear wanna lay emphasis on inside last year. I mean it don't add a value to the health sector. So again, I think that so we divide the, the health sector into three main components. Um, number one, our primary health care. The primary health care now mostly prevention and mostly waiting to go on in the community. If we say we've been getting about 1,400 primary health care units in the country, we now increase that to about 1,500. And we distribute the, the PHU them such that the primary health care units such that nearly every individual in a salon now get access to a primary health care unit within a five-mile radius. So that's a major accomplishment. What you want to do now is for go into them primary health care units and, so, and improve quality. And for we, improving quality means enough for look for the physical infrastructure, look at the health workforce where they and look at the drugs where available at the inside. And so we do very well there. The other side of that now the hospital and clinical services. We get about 23 um, 23. Uh, mid-level hospitals, we get a few uh, tertiary hospitals. Again, we they get an aggressive stance there for, for do the same kind basic principle for improved quality. Number one, physical infrastructure. The government just to approve about seventy-six million dollars, uh, seventy-six million leons, sorry, um, seventy-six billion leons. Follow we go for go improve them physical infrastructure. So we just uh, award the contract them to contractor and now. We are ready for go hand over the site them to the contractor, uh, to the, the contractor and the people them. Again, this is a very subtle, important issue. This is not public funds. This is not public works. 
So what they do physical infrastructure, they take the contractor, we make sure so the hospital authorities and the, the community within the SAP, they're all in at the place, we outline what's in the improvement and will be. Right, so, 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 so Mr. Gone. Minister, who side them hospital here on a get for building? No, so the, the, first we they renovate all of the existing hospital. Then. At the same time, we get across plans the for build across the country. At the same time, we they build new hospital then. Right now, we just get about a $25 million award from the Japanese government, JICA, where they build a brand new center of excellence pediatric hospital at Lomli. And we will break down ground for that in, in March. At the same time, we they build a, a really high-end uh, hospital in Kerry Town. At the same time, we they work for build a cancer and diagnostic center in Kerry Town. At the same time, we also look for the tropical disease center in Kerry Town. We just don't receive funds for build three brand new hospitals, one at Pujang, one at uh, Moyamba, one at Karine. Um, at the same time, we they open a brand new hospital in Jujurima. We they work for one on Zimi, uh, Zimi. We they work for one at Koindu. So a, a lot is going on. At the same time, we they work with Partners in Health for open a brand new 166 bed hospital in Kono uh, with Partners in Health. So with the health infrastructure, then we go on now. We one get for do the Lomley Hospital. We only be the launch inside last year, and other one. We know the current status of the infrastructure. Then we carry on. So we only believe say with that, we then go down. Then go improve the health sector. Well, I think say overall, first way you improve the physical infrastructure. We want let them place here so be. You know, say person not go hospital for enjoyment, party business. You go the way you get trauma, where you hurt. Or you fumble hot, or your friend hurt, then they carry go hospital. We want to let the hospital yes, so be very, very appealing. Let people that feel seen that they go for, for receive health. So the physical infrastructure, we people that say Watano Day, the place dirty, we want to change the narrative they completely. Now I make all the resources out there. So if we say if we do all of that, we will address one critical piece, the infrastructure. For the energy sector now in place, yes, so we look at three lines of engagement. One, now the public grid. Second, na backup generator. Third, na solar power generator. So I mean solar powered energy. We look for a combination of all of this now, all of the inside there. So so I feel we'll get all them pieced in it together. We do that concurrently with the health workforce. Concurrently for make sure say we get the right number of nurses, the right number of doctors, the right number of CHOs, the right number of uh, technicians in that hospital there. So and most importantly, we did try now for make sure say we change the whole approach to healthcare delivery, we call them patient-centered care, client-centered care, so that all NCIO they do not to end in themselves. They all for be directed for provide high quality service to the patient them, in the best way for know if it they work or not they work, not to for ask the doctor and the nurse them, and for ask the patient them what they serve. All right, now, Mr. Minister, we will begin your discussion. You mentioned the government that approved about 76 billion loans and self get some other couple of them from partner them. Then couple of them I want to get from partner them. Now grant on a loan. So, um, so that, that disaggregate them. You know, first we, you know, we, we do work on uh, TB, HIV, and malaria through the Global Fund. And they also they support health systems in general. Uh, in the past, then, they give about $60 million. And then complaints say, we don't know if we use this money, I better. But I make a strong case to them, a strong case to them, such that now, with the president in support, they now increase the allocation to about $157 million Excuse to Salud me. as a grant. At the same time, we talked to the, the World Bank, you know, the, all of them project and they come to an end uh, this year. And we talked to them really nicely and with the president in support and with the seriousness, we didn't see all the approach. They increased their allocation from about $40 million to now $78 million as grant. The Lumley Hospital will build the $25 million grant. Some of the other hospital then, now, extended loan, soft loan. So now, a balance between loans and grants and actual government disbursement. Now, they make we able to build a new hospital there. 
So let me look at the issue of the health sector get different range and angle where people can describe them and say I'm in more need I'm for be done. And all of them things that we do highlight, some of the things that we do highlight say the health ministry with them parts of them I'm don't put in place. The issue of the health care service now one way people can get really key concern about in you work last year and ensuring that there is value added in the healthcare if it be accessible, affordable, and if for the all side of the country. Plus, you know, for sick, um, Nakai Long, and they want for can get better healthcare, na free tongue. When are the current status of the healthcare service are the different? I mean, health centers, they we get hospital, I mean, peripheral center, and other one there. So, uh, I think they're a very good question, Annie, because I think for we, uh, we know they look at all NTSO so in isolation. So for a district, for a province, or start with the province, the province you get a major provincial hospital. For example, in Bo, you get Bo Government Hospital. We're supposed to serve Bo and be a referral center for Moyamba, for Pujang, for uh, Bonf. Yeah. So which would they look at how for strengthen that? I think so they put a lot of resources into Bo Government Hospital but at the same time, we did look at all of the other peripheral hospitals there around both for see how best we could support them, the district hospital there as well. Beyond the district hospital, you get the primary health care center there. So we did try to support the one in there as well. So now a network, a network between all of the primary health care units, the district hospital, and the regional hospital. We all work, we try to work with them all as one unit. And not easy very, very difficult because um, right now the whole country, Sierra Leone, known, try to improve the input of resources into the healthcare. The government, they put about 11.6% of GDP into the healthcare system. We know, I mean, this government don't do extremely well because, I mean, about 6% them they put before. But with the current administration, the current president, they don't raise them up to about 11.6%. You know, with that kind of money there, you feel say it will make a real big impact. But at the same time, the per capita health expenditure, if you shape the, the money over the use per health to, uh, for everybody, everybody gets $64 for a year, the equivalent of $64 for a year for all of your care. But then you can yeah. measure it to people in demand and then how they want so, to see the service so, being So imagine broke. now if you get $64 for your health for the whole year, if you go broke your food today, that all that money they go in no time. So I think the way to do now for stretch that money day and try for organize it in such a way that we're able to forget the kind high quality service to the people them. So now very difficult challenge, but I think say we they improve on that considerably. And as I say, we okay. try for make sure say all in service here, not to all man food they broke at the same time, but we make sure say when somebody hurt a hospital, okay. they get the best service available. Mr. Minister, the issue of um, availability of doctors in your different updates that we do the key, you don't get statistics for say the country get a whole of 500 professional medical doctors. And out of this number, um, 100 and some they win a, um, administrative doctors. We may say, compared to a country in population of over 7 million, the doctors that we have available in a professional one of 500 not come measure it for able meet to the people in demand in the health sector. In this particular area, which you really don't change or improve in on a work on a don't they do? Okay. I think so that is very important. So first, um, we go see commerce. Commerce is the only medical school in the country, and they do extremely well. But we find out, say, um, commerce, they only graduate uh, 50 doctors a year. So with 50 doctors a year, for all we get to 5,000 doctors, it will take we 100 years, and that is not to reality. So first we need to expand the number of doctors that will graduate on an annual basis. So actually, last week we get a very productive meeting with Professor Alpha Uri A and team to we'll see how the Ministry of Health and the Ministry of Basic uh, Technical and Higher Education will work together for increase that number. Will they consider for see if we go able to foresee with the newer technologies we're available, if we expand into Jala and expand into Unimark for increase in numbers in general. 
So that now one thing I want to use other technology like an e-platform for learning uh, for increase the numbers. At the same time, we realize say, not to just the training number of doctors now the the end point. Um, we get even the the three hundred or so doctors who get, especially the young doctors, we get for create opportunities for them for get into specialty training. So they do right now. Last year, the president launched the uh, postgraduate training for medic medicine and surgery at the same time for nursing and for pharmacy services. So we want to expand NANI considerably. But as I have mentioned before, the commerce only for about 30 years now. And we train doctors, and we get only about, what, 350 doctors that are functional. So it shows you not to just the training, not the one thing. It's important for low able for get distribution and retention. So we get for very actively work for the doctor that will train, we will for distribute them all through the country and look for opportunities that when you when you deploy somebody in up country for work, we able for retain them. And for retain them, what you need now some amenities, some incentives, they will consider housing and things like that. But also more importantly, for let you get the equipment and supplies we go make them doctor as so fully functional. At the same time, you know, say you can work the remote site in this country and be meaningful and impactful, not to only they, but throughout the world, through research. So right now they talk to NIH for see if we can oh. work with our doctors that are learn and get research capabilities, they look at process improvement. So I think it's a combination of them fact that they're increasing the numbers, increasing the distribution potential, increasing retention capabilities, creating postgraduate training opportunities, mm -hmm. Now, one way we will increase the number of doctors. At the same time, with the work with CHOs, the community health officers, you know, some of them, they, we don't acquire a lot of skills. We get a, a, a nursing care that we they look at. We then get nurse practitioners. We, they're not to doctor them, but they, they do nearly as well as doctor them. So we they train nurse practitioners. We they train CHOs. We they train for, try to for expand the CHOs. In fact, they get a CHO surgery component where they go on now, where they train them as surgeons as for do minor operations. So between the combination of all in cancer and new, I think so we'll go look at improving the health workforce. But the doctors are really important. And I think so we'll also work on the nurses and the midwives. We don't expand the number of schools for midwifery. We don't expand the nursing care. No, we don't go from SCCHN with not sit and roll community health nurses to SRNs, you know, really high-level state-registered nurses. Even with the one in the, with the cancer center where they come, with the renal center where they come, with all of them different subspecialties where they come, where they begin to train nurses them, and specialty nurses that will go into all them discipline there. All right, so Mr. Minister, as you don't mention, um, but how some of the nurses them need some basic thing they've not posted them and uh, up country them. This brings me to the question about frontline work man them where they work um, presently or the door redundant them from the fight against the coronavirus. Last week we may get um, Solomon Jamil together with one of the, the, the people them who is concerned say about eight months they don't pay them. So how far or you are aware of, um, of some of them challenge there with them people you don't get? So I think it's so a major, major challenge them. So again, I know I know they're in the best place for address that because the NACOVAC nine deal with, with the situation. But I think so we we biggest concern uh, um, this now outbreak, um, COVID nineteen outbreak. And as I saw say, you know, it mean it car in waves. You know, and so where where you get a wave, you they try to bring a workforce for able for respond to that. If the numbers don't come down, if the numbers don't come down significantly, it's very difficult for retain that same workforce there. So unfortunately we they go back and forth with their numbers, yeah. So and, and I think so we look for NACOVAC right now for reconcile the number in it. So anybody we we owe for make sure they pay them appropriately. You know, and I think going forward, we they really try for make sure say at least we help workforce, people who really work for the ministry. We get about 16,000, nearly 17,000 people that are the workforce. We want for really for able for deploy them appropriately, one and for able for engage in their outbreak here. So in a way we'll get better control over, in a way we'll be able for work on their compensation appropriately. If they get allowances, we get a system for able for pay them. But I think say the ad hoc way 
you know, bring people in, the structure, not in a personal services contract when I get for them. It's very difficult for manage. Some people in the Navy then say they owe them some amount. Some, some people in the Navy they not ask them, say, for well, step down small bit, we wait till the next next outbreak. And then people in their mind, they're still hired by the organization. They still they expect pay throughout that period. Day. So I think they so will work with NACOVAC for re reconciling and they will try to resolve the issue. In it. So but in from the ministry, <coughs> we want your ministry of help people then to get a really clear structure of the engagement and then compensation. So looking at the fact that the one they already did into the field as well body will command them, don't they get in service? Then at the end of the day, waiting due them, we not in salary and other things them and other get them. You know things say this gonna discourage other people, we go and come on board. And already you don't say we need more medical people that we for come on board so that I mean it will be increased and meets to the country and population. But the one they already we don't get in service, waiting due them, they don't get so many excuses after they don't get in service. No, no I, I think so, again we have to distinguish between um, the recruitment and deployment we NACOVAC when they do for respond to an outbreak and the Ministry of Health and core business. I think all everybody within the Ministry of Health and core business and salary are in, not in interrupted at all. Then they get all of their salaries, you know. I think now the extra work with some people that they do associated with the COVID response, then get risk allowances so and then they forget. And I think see so, then NACOVAC they work for reconcile one and they. So it is time for emphasize say for this particular time we in the Minister of Health and Sanitation, now the ministry all will command them. We directly in a professional medical doctor or whatever in way that they serve and they make it medical feel, don't they get waiting due them and on time? The, the, the all medical staff where they work for the government of Sierra Leone, yes, they get PIN code. Okay. And then PIN code, they make sure so they get automatic payment. So then basic salary are always paid on time. You know, I think that the one thing I will get, for, get credit to this government for, in spite of COVID, in spite of the difficulties, people only get them pay on time. What's in the happen, the allowances, the extra allowances for extra work we then mm -hmm. do, we NACOVAC charge them for, for do. Now, that, now the, that's actually the problem. The way the Ministry of Health not get control over that. So again, uh, I just want to assure everybody that the Ministry of Health, which we're responsible for, will they make sure say, people then get paid appropriately. Now, Mr. Minister, over to you. The issue of knowing the current status of all peripheral units and other health facilities in other provinces now one way very key. In any way, don't make visits and then districts here for know the exact and get first hand information of the different well body sector them within the dis um, 16 districts them. So, we, we, we plans now for make sure they are going to every district. Plan, that means you don't know it. No, no, I don't go Connor, I don't go Mabroka, I don't go McKinney, I don't go Kenema, I don't do Bo. Um, and I think so, that not just for starters, but I make sure say I go around. Even this weekend, I go Pujan. So we they make a systematically so that then trip, then they, are, they, are they make a meaningful trip. You know what I mean? I, they go not only for assess what they happen on the ground, but for see what we need for do in the short term, <coughs> in the medium, me. and long term. So what will be your exact description of the side we don't mention? You talk about Kenemabo, and so you get planned for going to other districts. Yeah. But for the side that we don't go for, no, and assess, and no waiting for do for improve, the different body facility at the inside in the, what will be your exact description so, of so the facility uh, in the? Again, I think it's a very good question, and I'll just start with the best. You know, <laughs> One of the best where I see, you know, Aguma broke out hospital. Um, my work hospital, I mean, I was so thoroughly impressed um, by the how the place clean. As a good example, I go up one, use the bathroom, and say, oh, this is a public bathroom, they don't have to go use. The public bathroom is one of the cleanest I've ever seen in this country, now hospital. Then they take care of them place, and why did they, the paramount chief, he bring some in, but the way can visit them for cancer in the hospital. That's not really good. I'll go to the lab, I'll go to the clinics, I'll go to the um, uh, antenatal area. People seem for to do very, very well and they work well. I go to Kono, um, I see say, the partners in health. And par Hello. Uh, 
be. They can get an oxygen plant on the site now. Over 98 percent, 98 percent of the baby and they survive. You know, so you go to you see all the women and so glad everybody wait for them picking them for come on NICU. you. And then the good news that I don't see from uh, um, Kenema, sorry, from uh, Kono and Mabroka. I, I get so other one they want to see some real challenges. I go bo, as you say, the, the people that they struggle a lot. Now only about three doctors in the now provincial hospital, as you say. The Hello. Yes. Okay. Just so we get back up um, and generator, then we're ready, we function functional within a test every week, then get set aside fuel for the generator. Then. And so uh, you see improvement in the, I mean, I go Kenema, um, the, the x ray machine, you know, broke, they're not replace them, right. we work for actively replace them. So I see a whole spectrum okay. of good and not so good. Okay. And the opportunity right. will change. Hey, Mr. Minister, so far I don't highlight so many things the same way on I do inside last year. And all of them things that we feel so not do, we do in one way or the other, though, increase some side them in the health sector. We are the key challenge them where you think, say, the well body sector still the face. Well, um, several challenges, but again, just based on last year, for example, uh, it looked like all my long begin forget self about the fire incident. We we'll call it, yeah, so I mean, we able for mount a very, very robust response from the medical sector, even with the handicap that we'll get. You know, we get top surgeon, then we get top plastic surgeon. Now we own surgeon them on yes, a cam and cam. We own, we own surgeon them. You know, we own surgeon them. Top, top surgeon them, you know. We, the problem we're getting are the numbers. You know, we get very, very few of them. You know, so the, the good thing about our way when this crisis occurred, they're able for jumping right away, for able for stabilize the situation. The additional people that will get now being back up, we come for can help for support the indigenous Sierra Leone and uh, doctor that will get. One of the offshoot of that uh, realization that will not get a real burned unit at the hospital. Level. And again, I think so that I mean major, major challenge for we. Uh, one of the offshoot them of that now for make sure say we get a burn unit not only in our corner right now but also probably begin look at the possibility of expanding burns capabilities throughout the country. Um, one of the things that we then party that we've been car with come for can help we not only for respond to the burn situation but also for train in Sierra Leone and counterpart, especially the nurse system on critical care. So we just get about a quarter of a million dollars from the West African uh, WAHO, West African Health Organization, as seed money for begin to start the project for establish a branch in that corner. Okay, in line with the um, Wellington Fire incident, quickly, we know the current status. We know say, a lot of victims, they may involve some be the hospital and some be the discharge. We know the current status. We still get some so of the within our hospital. We still get about three people there. We're still in our hospital, two in Connaught and one in our emergency. And, um, you know, we, we don't discharge um, about um, over 67 people there with it in ambulatory care. As you know, over 300 people have been impacted by this. So the initial um, one that we report, about 87 of them die uh, on the spot. Um, later on, we get about you know, close to 67 people that die in our hospital because there are also them in get third degree burns, up to 90% of them body, then we nearly no, no, no survivable. You know? But then managed and tried and tried to. So I mean, we get over 67 people that survive. We and then get them requisite care. We now then on the now host and they can now for change their wounds. Um, but let you know, see no more for managed in case yeah. So a lot of them now long term care because uh, some some the burns have been so profound and they lead to deformities. So you get forget multiple surgeries for correct them. You know, some get third degree burns where you need for be healed from inside, not just on the surface. So it will require long term care and also a lot of psychosocial support. Again, 
I think they cannot in in emergency hospital in the child trams and recuper. They all step up to the plate, and we need for getting credit. I think so. We need for build up beyond that for make sure so we expand in capability. So that I think you know, no, no, one thing we all, all need right. to be proud of. I think going forward, the biggest challenge we'll get now now how for first manage the workforce we'll get. As I said, we get over 16,000 people in the workforce. Uh, we just get approval for hire another 3,000 people that over the next two years. Um, the challenge we'll get now now for make sure say, the people that we'll get, we get pin codes, they really they on site and then they perform their duties uh, with, with the kind of uh, professionalism we would expect. A lot of people in it do well. Unfortunately, some of them do too well. Unfortunately, some people in there, we get pin code. We're supposed to dinner at one location. We then register in our location. At times, you go, you know, they see them there. So we need to fix that. We need to fix that immediately because then they're really unfair because other people in the same hospital, in the same facility, where they volunteer their service. Then volunteer their service, they not get pin code. Then some, some of the ones that we get pin code, you know, they show up for that completely unacceptable. Okay. So now they get rosters, you know, active rosters in each of the hospital them for no say Uda for day, Usai them for day, and for make sure they're in the on spot. We they get on the spot checks, we get for audit the whole system. Then one in the we get pin code, we know they show up, we get them off the list. So we'll create space for uh, bring more people. Okay, up. Mr. Minister, I still think we get for do with the fire incident. We may see where it may happen. Um most of the body they may can uh, uh, not hospital. Now, um, as on a day in the process for build some hospital them, you know, any plans they forget more mortuaries them? Well, each of the hospital they get forget mortuary, they will get forget expanded mortuary. In fact, we've been get even before all of this crisis, the government may set aside a large amount of money for re refurbish the mortuary in the mass. Now, all of the district and provincial headquarters. The other thing we'll be trying to do now for make sure say you know they only get mortuary service but also get pathology services now all of the hospital them then the ongoing but clearly with the new resources and new hospitals we get we make sure say um, uh, a mortuary a uh, critical part of them again I get special focus on mortuaries you know because I think at times we spend a lot of energy and time on the living and for take care of the sick we really important. But at the same time, when we lost somebody, that the last opportunity that for show dignity and respect. So the mortuary then really need for 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 up we game day, for make sure say when somebody lost in life, that we maintain that dignity and respect and care. For so them. in line with the different thing that we wanna get for do for this year, we think of the strategy and approach and how most of the health infrastructure project will be done start last year when you go down. So we, we, we get uh, we get we get a really so this year and the year of delivery. So and all on the health sector. We'll delivery on which area exactly we all get all aspects of our work. Okay. So what do we do in fact in March so uh, so here in, in, in Osman the invitona in March we we'll get a major major health summit where they bring all of the people that will work on the health sector representatives from all of the 16 districts all of our development partners all of the public sector civil society we will bring everybody together for outline which thing we intend for do for the health sector going forward so in that summit day we get plenaries we get breakout sessions and at the end of the day at the end of the three days we get a major award ceremony for the one that we don't do well in the past. So, Doc, years. before you left, will you still get people in where you believe or not get confidence how we will body sector? Because most times we can see other people in sick passing, gonna name or encounter them. Also, what of assurance you go and give to them people in and tell them, say, this particular year, then go we'll see change and improvement. So, I assure them, say, you know, keyword did that is because it's not perception. Okay. Um, perception, perception are some people a reality, but we did try to tell them say, now, over the next few months, a few weeks, go to the hospital and then see what may happen. So right now we get a major, major strategy we on for now. First, we want to reduce maternal mortality from the current 717 per 100,000. The initial target now for Brian count to 580. Me, they make commitment to this country that we will work hard over the next two years for Brian count to under 300. 
than a major commitment. We will look at cervical cancer. We will look for eliminate cervical cancer in this country. Now, private issue, people don't need to talk about time, but plenty of people don't need to die from cervical cancer. We get vaccine for them now. We need to make sure, say, anybody will reach the age of 10. We vaccinate the whole country, and now we need to put a, a screen, a block, for make sure that people are not getting infected. In the one that we're older than 10 years, we make sure so we get early okay. diagnosis and treatment. And lastly, sickle cell. Okay. We look for sickle cell cure, not the sickle cell management. Okay. Look out. Just watch out for the space, yeah? All right. Plenty. Thank you. We joined inside the program this morning in Namina. Dr. Austin Demby, in the Minister of Health and Sanitation, as him in the studios, he can't talk about the work inside 2021 and the plans him we they get for the year 2022. Well, now you're good already cutting off the program. Good morning, Salon. Plenty thank you to the producer Michael Sambola and Alex Lawrence Kuma. And plenty thank you to DJ Lapa, we get technical support. And Moses Kavora, we make on a TV live on a Facebook. So till we meet another time, we bring the program to you this Friday morning. My name is Usman Kamara. And it's up to you, Colonel. It's a happy weekend. Bye-bye.